Somebody ought to pray. Somebody take it over. Somebody take it over. Somebody take it over. Somebody take it over. You got to understand. When you got up this morning and some come up, you know why? Because God spoke it into existence. You know why it still comes up? Because God still holds it in his hands. It'll come up every morning until he decides not to. Somebody's got a great big God. You give him a one more time. Give him a big praise. Somebody give him a shout. Come on now. Somebody come magnify the Lord with me. You know what that meant was? It didn't mean God's size changed. You ever get a magnifying glass and look at something? The size of that object never changed. But what changed was your perspective of what you saw. And when you begin to magnify God, you begin to realize he's a lot great bigger than your problems. Come on. He's a lot great bigger than the election. Come on now. He's a lot great bigger than COVID. He's a lot great bigger than financial woes or marital problems. He's a great big God. Lord, give me praise. Amen. Well, Lord, you know what? He's my God. That's the key. Not only is he a great big God, but he's my God. I got a bunch. I got a bunch. Brother Allen, come up here. Brother Allen's going to receive our ties and offering. He comes. Let's give God another good praise this morning.
We'll pray for whoever goes in because the Bible instructs us to pray for our leaders. So, you know, I just wanted to bring that before you guys. And uh, in the book of Daniel, chapter 3, verse 18, uh, in that scripture, what I want, what I really want to, what I really want to emphasize, that I think needs to be emphasized in this hour that we live in, this day and time. You know, we're living, we're living in the last days, and it's dark, and, and dark times, and it's going to get darker. And uh, you know, the Lord spoke uncertain. He, he told me, He said, uncertain times. And then he, he told me, he said, uh, times are uncertain now. He said, but the longer I tarry, the more uncertain times are going to become. You know, what I want to point out in Daniel, though, is and emphasize to you guys, it says, but if not, you know, we need some people in these dark times to say, I know I'm going through this test. I know I'm going through this trial, tribulation. But if not, God, I'll still praise you. I'll still worship you. My faith still lies in you. Just like it always has. He says, be still and know that I am God. And, you know, this is just me. The Bible, for, it don't say this as far as I know. But to me, when he says, be still and know that I'm God, he said, be still in your situation. Be still in your trial and your test. Be still and watch me move again like I've moved so many times before. That's what, that's what he's, he's saying. And, you know, uncertain times, you know, uh, it's, it's dark and, and we're going to have to put our faith. We may, there may come a time, the Lord said, where you may have to put your faith, your trust, and your hope in Him. And you may not even feel Him in your situation. You know, but He says, praise me, worship me, put your faith in me anyway. You know, there's a song that we used to sing in, uh, in, when I went to the Baptist church. It says, like a tree planted by the living water, I shall not be moved. And, you know, I think about that song off and on all the time in my head. And I think about the, the, the tree. And, you know, I picture that tree being me. And we all know what the living water is. The living water is the Lord. And, you know, I picture myself as being, being that tree to be steadfast. Keeping the faith, you know, uh, in the Lord, come what may. You know, it's been a bad year for me and my wife this year. She's lost her sister. I lost my dad at the beginning of the year. You know, I, I work at Swaggery's. I work on the main line. I stand up there. I'll sing praises unto God. I'll sing it out loud. I'll sing contemporary Christian. And then I've got some friends, you know, some co-workers that work around me, and I'll say sometimes, and I'll look around, and I notice they're singing too. I don't know if they're singing Christian music, but, you know, I'm singing, and, you know, it gets them to singing too. But, you know, I praise and worship Him a lot at, at, at work. Uh, the Holy Spirit talks to me a lot at work and deals with me. She gives me messages, scriptures, things to say. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but, I went back. See, I took but you know, Dad died, and it was a hard time, and I was emotional, of course, but I come back to work, my first day back, I was up on the line, I was just working, very emotional, and the Lord spoke to me, and He said, worship me, and once He said, worship me, I began to start saying it. I guess Praise is under him. You know, we work 10, 11 hours a day. Uh, I sing a lot. I mean, it makes the time go by fast. But, you know, that was a hard time for me. 
you know, there's there's hard times in this world right now, and we have to keep our faith and our eyes and our trust and our hope in the one true living God. Not Buddha, not Allah, you know, the one that died for us, the one that hung on the cross, the one that said, I'll take their place. That's right, amen. The one that created us in his image, in his likeness. And ain't it great to know that we serve and we worship a living God. The ones that serve and worship Buddha and Allah can't say that. Just watching that. You know, but uh, in the book of Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had a made up mind. You got to have a made up mind in this hour and this time. I'm going to serve God. I'm, I'm going to put my whole faith in God, come what may. You know, even, you know, uh, I'm just going to be real. Even if it costs you your own life, you keep your faith in God. But anyway, uh, we got to stay steadfast in the Lord, in our faith. Um, we got to have a strong faith. If you don't get nothing out of this message today, the Lord wants me to tell you guys, He wants us to get this. The harder that times come, He says, the more faith and the more you worship and praise me. And He says, even when you can't feel me, you don't know that, I'm, you know, you don't even see me working in your situation. Our time is not God's time. Our time is not God's time. You know, God will deliver us when He's ready. And it is true what all the preachers and pastors says. You know, uh, trials and tests only last for a season. They only last for a season. They'll, they'll come to an end. But, you know, God... God is the, the deliverer, and His time ain't our time. You know, usually when we're we're in a financial situation or we're in a marital situation or whatever, we're having problems. You know, and uh, Satan's throwing this at us, throwing that at us. We want out. You know, we're, oh man, I, I'm just, you know, I've dealt with this two weeks. You know, I, I can't, I can't stand this no more. I'm tired of it. And, but that may not be God's plan. That may not be God's plan for us. We have to keep our faith in Him. And, you know, He always, church, He always takes care of His people. He always meets their needs. And uh, the next scripture I'm going to go to is the book of Matthew, chapter 14, 29. Paul was uh, walking, you no. Know, Okay, Acts 16 to 20, 25. Uh, Paul and Silas were locked up in jail. And the uh, Bible said around midnight they were praying to God and singing hymns unto the Lord. And it said that uh, there were 26 prisoners in there with uh, with uh, Paul and Silas, and they were uh, they were they were uh, worshiping God and all that, you know. But they said that uh, they said that they were worshiping Him and. Uh, the jailkeeper was asleep. And an earthquake had came where they were singing praises and uh, praying unto God. An earthquake hit, and it shook. The Bible said it shook the very foundation. And the prison cells, cell doors were open. And it, it awoke the jailkeeper. And he thought that, he thought that, uh, the, I guess the prisoners had escaped. He thought they had escaped. 
So he drew his sword and was, was going to take his own, you know, take his own life. And Paul, Paul yelled out and said, "Do thyself no harm." He said, "For we're all still here." And uh, he uh, he said, "Do thyself no harm." And uh, sometimes, church. Uh, Trials and tests are, are ordained by the Lord. You know, sometimes He makes us walk through them for our co workers, our brothers, our sisters, our loved ones, whatever the case may be. Sometimes He, he makes us walk through them. And, uh, but the jailkeeper, uh, come to know the Lord, you know, and then, you know, those 26 prisoners, you know, they, they heard, they, they heard, uh, they heard uh, them uh, worshiping, you know, praising God, but you know, there's another case right there that Paul and Silas were in jail, and I believe, that is just what I believe, I believe it was ordained by God for, for that jailkeeper and, and possibly for the, the 26 prisoners, you know. Sometimes we have to walk through stuff and we don't understand why, but we got to keep our faith in Him because He knows, He knows the purpose, He knows the reason, He knows what's, you know, what's best for us. And, uh, he, uh, he, uh, they praised and worshiped God. And, uh, it said later on that, uh, the jailkeeper had told Paul, said, you know, I, I, I'll just kind of paraphrase, it, said, I want to serve the God that you serve. And said, uh, what do I, what do I have to do? To, to be saved. And, you know, the uh, Paul and Silas had gathered with him and prayed, prayed with him. And, uh, you know, he asked the Lord into his life, into his heart. And it also says that later on, during the same, during the same uh, uh, day, uh, later on at night, he was baptized. But, uh, so, you know, trials and tests in our life are, are sometimes ordained by God for others to, to, I've always said actions speak louder than words. I can, I, I you know, Pastor Philip could be living out in the world, and I could meet him the first time, and I could say, hey, you know, I'm a, I'm a Christian, you know, I go to Mount Bell, you know, this, that, and the other. And, and, you know, he might believe me, but then again, he may not. You know, that's, that's just, that's up to him at that point in time. But if he sees God, if he sees God in my everyday life, if he sees me praying, if he sees me reading my Bible, you know, if he sees me fasting, uh, if he sees me singing praises like they do at my job to uh, to the Lord, then he don't have to he don't have to second guess. He knows. He knows. The Bible says you will know by the fruit that they bear. Yeah. You 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 will you'll know. And you know, I've always, I've always tried to be that way and live that way. But you know, we have to, we have to have faith. We have to put our whole faith in God. You know, um, but the next scripture I have is Matthew, and. Peter 
was walking on water. And the Lord asked Peter to come forth. Or to come. Peter stepped out of the boat and he was coming, he was coming uh, toward the Lord. He was walking upon the water. And he had his eyes upon God. Bible said a storm happened. Uh, you know, the winds got high, the, the ship was tossed to and fro, uh, probably lightning and, you know, everything. Well, at that point in time, Peter got his eyes off of God and on the circumstances at hand. Got off his eyes, got his eyes off of God and on the situation of the storm. When he did that, he sank into the depths of the sea. And he hollered for the, uh, the Lord. He said, he hollered for God. He said, um, he said, God of hell. And as he was sinking into the depths of the sea, and uh, God reached down his hand and pulled Peter back up. So, you know, don't, don't think, don't think that, oh man, I've been in this trial, I've been in this test so long, uh, God's not going to deliver me, I'm never going to come out of this thing. I just you know, because that's not, that's not true. I mean, you seen how far Peter had failed when he took his eyes off of God and he reached down and he picked Peter up. You know, it's so easy to, to praise and worship God and it's so easy to have faith in God whenever he brings us out of the trial. Mm -hmm. Oh, look what God did for me. Look, look, look what he, look what he done in my life. You know, and that's all true. But we have to Praise Him, worship Him, have faith in Him when it's hard. During the, during the trial, during the test, during the circumstances around you. And, uh, you know, Peter hollered, out, Peter hollered out and said, you know, ask Him to help him, to help him. And uh, sometimes I think... I think when you're in your lowest valley, when you're in your lowest valley, I think that's when, uh, uh, you know, you, you can see God move the most. But I think that's when you need to praise Him more, to worship Him more, to have more faith in Him than you can in the That's when it counts. We can all worship Him. We can all praise Him when things are going good. We can all have faith in Him when things are going good. But we need to learn to praise and worship Him when things are bad. You know, me and, me and my wife, we've learned that this year. You know, and uh, we've been around a lot of trials and tests ourselves, especially financially. And the last one we went through, <coughs> Uh, my wife, she want to, she's a, she's told people, you know, I'm a fix it person. She wanted to try to fix it. And you know, it seemed like certain times every year, we walked around that same trial, that same test, that same mountain. And I told her, I said, and I've been out of work for like a month. And I told her, I said, no. I said, we're going to wait. We're going to see what God's going to do. I said, because, you know, I said, he may be trying to show us something because we will always walk around this same mountain, as Pastor says. You know, we always, we're always walking around this same mountain. But we have to, we have to uh, uh, believe and have faith and trust in God. You know, during this time, during this dark hour, this dark season, you know, that's all you've got at church. You know, uh, man will fail you. 
Amen. Man will fail you, but God will fail you. You know, you, you know, you think you're always alone, you're never alone. God's always with you. He's always with you. Just, just, just because you know you don't see Him doesn't mean He ain't there. And uh, but we got to keep our faith and our hope and our trust in Him. And uh, especially now more than ever, you know that's. That's that's really what we got right now. That's that's what we need. You know, I was thinking, you know, as dark as this world is, you know, the Bible says, greater is in you than he that's in the world. Yeah. And you know, I was thinking, what me and you have in, in, inside of us, this world and all the darkness and everything that's going wrong. We've got something inside of us that can turn this thing completely around. Amen. We've got a fire. We've got a fire inside of us that can that can it can turn the homosexual straight. It can it can it can, it can change. It can change this world. It can change this. It can change people's hearts. It can change this. You know. But we have to keep our faith and our trust. And eyes upon him. Right. He is the way, he is the truth, and he is the life. And he is the way. And that's what we have to do. We have to, we have to stay steadfast. We have to stay steadfast in him. And, you know, we have to keep our faith on him. And, Move, move in the directions that he would have us to move, obey him. You know, I, I'll, uh, I'll be at work or something, and, you know, I, it could be something little to me that's me washing my hands and drying my hands, and I can throw a paper towel towards the garbage and hit the floor. And then something will speak to me and say, pick that up. And I'll reach out and pick it up. And I'll throw it in the trash. And I've seen a lot of, I'll, I'll walk around there sometimes, and they'll be, you know, Napkins and things like that in the floor. But, you know, we gotta, we got to have a strong faith in Him. Because that certain time is coming, church. We're living in some uncertain times now. Amen. It's going to get worse, He said. And there's going to, we're going to, there may come a time when we have to have a strong faith. We have to have a faith in Him when, you know, everything looks dark now. But, you know, they, they, they get uh, uh, church services closed down. They get, they get these Bibles. You know, it's going to be dark. It, it's dark now. It's going to be a lot darker. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to have your faith in Him. Amen. There may come a time, He said, when you've got to have faith in Him, that you don't feel Him. You don't see Him moving. But He said, keep your faith in me. Uh, praise and worship me anyhow. He's worthy to be praised and worshipped. He died on the cross for us. He sent his son to die on, or die on the cross for us. You know, you think about that. The creator of all. The creator of all. Loves us that much. The, the king of all kings. The lord of all lords. Loves us so much that he brought. He sent his only begotten son. To die on the cross. For you and me. Amen. And you know, this is my second message. My first message, I got up here to, to preach. And we were in uh, Brother Richard's class. And uh, he was teaching. Uh, he was doing a study, you know, te a teaching on uh, ministry. Witnessing people and preaching and all this stuff. And uh, I, uh, I got up here my first time. And I told, I told uh, my wife, I said, you know, it was humbling to get up here and speak God's word. But I read a book in a, a chapter in a lesson in the book that we had at Richard's class. And it said, there, it said, uh, uh, I said, you know, I said, it's humbling to get up here and speak 
God's word. But what caught my eye in that book was it said it was talking about speaking for God. I said, getting up there and speaking God's word is home. I said, but when I got up there the first time and I was speaking for God, who am I? Who am I to speak for God? Who am I? You know, I, God don't need me to speak his word. He don't need me to speak his word. You know, and it's like Pastor, Pastor always says, you know, we don't need, or God don't need us. We need God. And we need him during this day and this hour more than ever. Yeah. We need him to, uh, you know, uh, you know, the, ant the Antichrist is, you know, roaming to and fro. You know, we need, we need the Lord to intervene down here and, you know, work his magic. But we, we, we've, got to, we've got to stay in the faith during this time coming up. I feel that in my spirit. God brought that to my spirit. I mean, more now than ever. And, and the true worshipers, the true praisers can praise and worship God and can have faith in God in the hard times. The true ones in the hard times. And uh, I'm going to have an altar call so the musicians that come. I'm gonna I'm gonna ask if anybody this morning maybe maybe you need that faith I was talking about. A strong a strong faith, you know. A faith that says, Come what may. Come what may. I'm going my faith is gonna be rooted and grounded in him. It's going to be, he brought that to my spirit the other day. Rooted and grounded in the Lord. So, if you need prayer for your faith, good. maybe you've got faith, maybe your faith is weak. You know, these altars are open. I'll pray with you. If you need prayer for anything, lost loved ones, whatever the case may be. I'll pray for, you know, whoever needs prayer. If you want to stand in for somebody, whatever the case may be. But we got to have our faith during this time, church. If we don't have nothing else in this dark hour that we're living in, these last days, we've got to have our faith in Him, rooted in ground. Not swaying to the right, not swaying to the left, but rooted in ground in the Lord. Does anybody need prayer? Oh, really? 
And God, we're asking you, God, to continue to move in our country, God. Continue to do mighty acts, mighty wonders, mighty miracles in this country, God. For your people's sake, Father Lord. And Lord, we ask you, God, right now, Father God, to be with us, each and every one that's here, God. Those that weren't able to make it through the sickness and thanks, God, please touch them and help them and strengthen them, Father Lord. And Lord, we thank you, God, for your power and your mercy and your grace and your loving kindness. And we ask it in the name of Jesus, we pray, and everybody say it. Amen. Amen.